Welcome to the Straight Line Mission Across New Zealand, our attempt of an adventure where one must journey through challenging and potentially perilous terrain whilst not deviating from a perfectly straight line. Along the way we would encounter many tough and tiring obstacles, from thick bush to many fields, vast rivers, blackberry bushes, charging bulls, many formidable fences and even the northern section of the Tararua mountain range the notorious spine of the Lower North Island that every year is the undoing of numerous trampers due to its treacherous topography and swiftly changing weather. Before we set off, how did we come up with this absurd idea? The truth is, we didn't. British YouTuber, adventurer, and all-round generally spiffing chap Tom Davies, also known as GeoWizard, is the true pioneer of walking in straight lines, with a total of five attempts at crossing various countries in a straight line. Inspired by him, we thought we may as well give it a crack. Being a small island in the middle of the Pacific, with closed borders, did not give us a whole lot of choice in terms of countries we could attempt. So therefore, New Zealand seemed like the perfect option. And now, it is time for you to buckle up your seatbelts, to fasten your gator straps, to ignore any warnings of imminent cyclones, and join us on the west coast of New Zealand, heading towards our start line, four kilometers north of Himitangi Beach. Right at our estuary up there. Kind of the starting point for our mission. Just gonna calibrate the compass, get the GPS completely ready, and then walk into the bush that way. We've got a little bit of sand art the start line. And we're going to go out and touch the water. Here we are. No more lateral deviation, hopefully, now for the next 103 kilometers. Oh we're in the water and touch the little wave. It's the west coast. Okay, where we go. Oh. Start walking to the east. This is going to be a breeze. Ah, so our first water crossing of the journey. Excluding when we did it down there, 20 meters away to get to the star point. Oh, this is a nice color. Hmm. Um, lovely. Oh. <laughs> First twenty meters have gone well. Oh dear God. <laughs> Honestly, the gators might have been a very good idea. Some 50 meters in, and things were not as nice and laid back as we had anticipated for the first stretch of day one. The satellite imagery was nowhere near detailed enough to make out the inconvenience that the beachfront bush would provide. It soon became a wall of wood that pushing through was slow and tiring. Finn and I quickly adopted the logic from the timeless classic We're Going on a Bear Hunt, and decided that since going through it wasn't efficient, and going around it would destroy our one true calling, that we should instead go under it. Here, you witness the sad realisation that we are still just a stone's throw from the ocean. However, the pines you can see in the near distance, we knew should be a lot swifter to travel through. Oh, this is... Oh, okay. No, you did so bad. You alright? How's the line? Oh, goodness. Guys. Let's go. The thickly knit, 
scratchy twigs had dug into us, resulting in much discomfort and critique of our mental stability. But we dispelled these unhelpful thoughts with the callings of the East Coast Beach, now just less than 101 kilometres away. Yeah, looking forward to some short dense pine after this. At last we had conquered our first section of undesirable vegetation, and the boundary to the pines provided us with a sanctuary from the sharp sticks. We had a short break to nurse our wounds with the contents of our first aid kit, which although we'd expected to need at some point, 15 minutes in was sooner than anticipated. Actually strapping tape and on is a great idea. For this first section of our line, the satellite imagery is very vague and vastly inaccurate of the type of vegetation that we had encountered. That being said, we had managed to keep our accuracy to within 6 metres of the line we were following. Now this raises the question of how straight does an attempt have to be to be considered a straight line. The guidelines that the straight line and community have adopted are as follows. If a run is within 25 metres of the line, it is considered to be a platinum run. If it is within 50 metres, it's considered to be a gold, etc. However, the one thing Finn and I both said going into the mission was that if we didn't fully commit to the Platinum Run, it was not worth even attempting. So in summary, we are looking to be within 25 metres of the line. The pines were in fact a lot nicer to walk through, and allowed us to move a lot more efficiently and painlessly than before. We even found ourselves walking along an actual track. However, this was short-lived, as it soon bent away, leaving us headed for a section in the pines which offered residence to a patch of cutty grass. We've got like some cutty grass or something. They're very sharp thoughts there. Fun fact, if you cutty grass only cuts you in one direction. Pardon? That's the direction. That's what? That was the direction. Oh. <laughs> that's I didn't know that. Yeah, only if you go one way does it actually cut you. So with the grain. It's it's um, towards the end, I believe. Oh, we're not towards the centre? Nah, I don't think so. Wait, I'll test. Actually, I don't want to test. I feel like evolutionary testing might be a... That's true, it could be. Maybe I remembered it incorrectly. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, I'm too scared to test. I'm gonna rip open my fingers. Wait, we Sorry. have come across marsh. Luckily, we seem to be passing by it. Yeah, but I think there might be some swamp land in could the UK. Could be more to come. Our first road of the trip, even though it's gravel, count it. Let's go. Hopefully, they're all as nice and this unelectric. Well, this has been so bad. Finally, found a little bit of open land to walk through. Oh, we're at the farm. First, more sizable fence crossing. Is this much marsh on the map? But what maps is he referring to, you may ask? Although we're only two and a half kilometers into day one, we're actually months into our elaborate endeavor. Countless hours were spent scouring topo maps, satellite imagery, and land information to best prepare ourselves regarding the natural and man-made obstacles that we would face. After lots of enjoyment watching our inspiration, Mr. Tom Davies, we decided that his methodology of begging for forgiveness 
rather than asking permission, would not suit our rule-abiding mindsets. Unfortunately, this decision would present us with a ton of administrative burdens, requiring 200 plus hours of preparation. Finding a viable line alone took us a few weeks, due to the necessity of avoiding towns, the worst part of the Tararua Ranges, and perhaps, most importantly, a naturist resort. Yeah, got that. We're going to start really walking now. You can find us here with the far hills in the distance. We'll be crossing those in two days' time. It's a big mountain range. The fence, that top wire is gone. It's fallen down. It makes an easy crossing for us. The entry into the open farmland was certainly a welcome one, as negotiating our way through the trees took far more effort and concentration. Now, free from foliage, we were able to use the GPS to look ahead in the direction of our line and keep walking consistently, and to reduce time wasted, micro-correcting our path at almost every single instant. Prints of some kind. Yeah, I can just keep, we just crawl under that one. I can take the GPS if you want. You can even see the wire, just about. I'll pass your stuff to you. Top of this hill marked a spot to enjoy some morning tea. It was also a milestone in the sense that we could clearly make out the farmland we'd be crossing for the next two days before we'd have to ascend up into the Tararuas. But as well as gazing to the future, it was also great to reflect on the distance we had just completed and how great of a start we had had. We'd managed to get to the start of our line by 9am and continued the first few kilometres with a decent pace, which meant we were confident we would get to our campsite before nightfall. In terms of following the line, we were also doing really excellent. We had minimum lateral deviation, which we were pretty stoked about, considering that we'd only had one practice with the GPS beforehand. It also is an important milestone for you, the viewer, as it marks the point in the footage where we started using stabilisation. So, if you have fought your way through the shaky film thus far, we are truly grateful and hope the rest to come is softer on the stomach. We can't see it on the camera, but we believe we just spotted a group of beehives in the near distance. So we're hopefully not going to get attacked by a swarm of bees. That wouldn't be particularly good. Before the bees, we've got a bit of a drain of the channel. What's the bank like? Oh, flawless execution. Okay, I don't want to pass the camera, so we're going to try this. Okay, oh gosh. This is a very much active beehive. They're very small. I don't know if I'll actually be able to pick them up on camera, but they are swarming around. So luckily our line's just past it. Oh, rabbit. Wow, what's that hair? That shot out fast. <laughs> Jeez. I have to say, after all the animals I thought we'd encounter today, cows were up there, but bees and hares are not on the list of us. Although the long stretch of fields provided us with some fast and fantastic frolicking, every hundred meters or so we were greeted with a fence across, just to keep us on our toes, or more accurately, on our bellies. Although the fences were interrupting and required higher exertion than just walking, so far they had just been a minor obstacle. Now we reach the moment where we approach our first really challenging shoulder high fence crossing. We have just encountered a very high fence, it's up to our shoulders. Um, I reckon it's not electric and I'm going to touch it. Okay. <laughs> you can get a blade of grass and do it. Oh yeah. That's okay. Then just get closer and closer with your hand. We 
be a... Oh, no, it's electric. <laughs> yeah, that's electric. Woohoo! Okay, how are we getting out of this? I reckon, like, I can, like, stand on my hands. Do you have a GPS? Nah, it's not like that. In the back? Nah, I'm not like that. Okay. Where is it? I was putting the GPS in the grass is a bad idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, got it. Ah, oh, relief. So in future probably should put that, just chuck it. I mean if it's like that over. Fish remains. So I think there's a little fire here. It's interesting. They're not completely rotten. <laughs> Up the hill. Oh, livestock. <laughs> oh no. Cows, here we come. Yeah, no, no, no. We don't really want to. There's a lot of them. They seem to be moving away now. For the last six months, we had planned out everything meticulously, and to the best of our knowledge, thought of every obstacle and challenge that could harm our effort, and came up with a solution to them. That being said, there were two obstacles we had identified that we had no complete plan to vanquish. First, electric fences, and secondly, livestock. The only plan we had in regards to these two things was to adopt the just send it attitude, and work around any pain or harm that this may inflict. Yeah. Why we come to go to the side so they go over that way? Yeah, the one bad thing is on Google Earth, cows are not marked as features. Yeah. I don't think we deviated too much though, luckily. We deviated some. But not more than like 50. Not more than like 15 though. We kind of don't want those cows just sitting in the corner. So where are we going? 
coming to say hi okay if you want to go kind of over so they can come round to our side I think oh they're kind of cutting us off now. It's terrifying. It's so big. If, if, if they weren't scared of us, they could fully just... I don't know, I'm the lone cow. Oh gosh. This feels like something out of a western. It does. They just it's need like... to draw, draw from their holsters. There we go. seeing us out of their paddock but Jump up, but I don't want to because I probably sprain an ankle or something. Yeah. This is gross farm water. How will be into it? Yeah. How does it feel? Crossing around. Well, I think it's only knee deep. But, yo. Oh. I kind of hate to say it though, that's kind of refreshing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. little like cross beams coming up here. Very nice for crossing fits. Oh yo! A very 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 distant I can see cars. Did you see over there? Yeah yeah yeah. That's probably the same highway. Yeah. Oh what's the time? Uh 20 minutes. Uh, yeah that's pretty good progress. Yeah. Midday. This is the 
season one, episode two. For some reason, I'm even more scared this time. Just because we saw there was like light when they were just bolting. New Zealand doesn't need the cow industry. Not like in South Africa, like that. Yeah. What oh, was Can we go through the gap? Is that offline? I need to go through it. They're literally not even scared of us. rude about them but they were some very respectful cows. Honestly was never worried at all. Twenty meters Do you reckon more than twenty meters? That's kind of terrifying. Yeah, they actually seem not too bad. They're just very behind me. Yeah they were circling us. But I think they were just kind of friendly you know. Nah, I've never said a bad thing about a cow in my life. I've always loved them. No, I haven't seen anyone the whole day, which is crazy. Yeah, it's been desolate. We were wondering if it's because it's a Sunday. Except the cow. Yeah. I feel like farmers I feel like farmers still work on Sundays. Yeah. It's the sort of job I mean, that's kind of have to. Yeah, you can't just neglect your cows too early. I mean cows are probably scarier than farmers to be honest. Yeah, I probably agree with that. Can murder you. Farmers, Farmers can murder you, but they're more likely to be caught for it. Yes. Yeah, at least if they do murder us, we'll be, be, we'll be accountable. Here we go, episode three of Straight Line is us the cows. These seem pretty inquisitive. Well, they seem quite oh, they're on the road. Oh, there they are. Yeah. Oh, you see them. There's a truck. Ah. We literally just said there were people. Oh my gosh. Why? <laughs> Quite slow. I reckon they might be able to see us. Yeah, I think they have seen us. What was that? I'm just not a big fan of how they have Yeah, they've stopped the car. We're just crossing. It's not a great look, jumping his teeth. No. Um, how far is it around to the gates over there? Um, considerably more than 25 meters. You reckon? Should we wave to him? Do you see us? Yeah, you see this. Um, yeah. Can we just walk over some? Yeah. Yeah, I reckon. He's right on our line, isn't he? Yeah. Just be fast with the cows. Ooh. That got shot. Let's go. Ow. Oh, he's leaving. Bro. Doesn't what? want to interrogate two teenagers walking across the line. Oh. Unless it is Brad. You guys, this is not what you signed up for. Yeah. You've been robbed of a, a farmer encounter. I know. 
Oh, he's just he might. Talking, he might. But we can't go over to him now because he's offline. <laughs> Surely this is Brad. Right Surely this is Brad. I honestly came for like just a chat with someone. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad my company is boring you so. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, it'd be cool to see. But he did. He just seemed. He just seemed to raise fairly friendly. Like. Yeah, he was like. He didn't march over to us or anything. Oh what? Do you reckon it is Brad? Hey, who is in that truck? Maybe he just thinks we're like one of his workers. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe. Oh. I know, he's coming around. He's coming around. Come and say hi. Come and say hi. Oh, oh, he's yeah. getting out. Oh, he's got a doggo in the car, I think. Oh no, he's walking the opposite direction. <laughs> Absolute legend. Unless he kicks him off his property. Oh, he's walking over. See? Yeah, How far can we deviate? We're on 15 meters. We're a little bit to the right, so we can oh, deviate a little bit. Yeah. Should we go to that gate? Because I thought it was a better look. Here he is, here he's coming. Do you want to do the talking? I mean, I think we both should. Yeah, okay. Alright, where do you go? Can we say hi? We just go to this first. Can we go to that gate? Is that too far? Yeah. Okay. coming over. Walk slowly so it's not like we're stopping when we get to them. Yeah, they're quite far off now. Off the line. Yeah. Hello! Do you wanna go? Yeah. Can we just take that? No, no, we shouldn't go over. Just, just like, we're gonna go and talk to him. Okay, we're just about far here. So we have to go in a completely straight line. Thank you. Yeah, Have a good day. Yeah. We should have given him our give a little page. Give a little page. Yes, given him our give a little page. Yes. Uh, oh god. Nah, he's been pretty chill. Um. Oh my god, farmer encounter number one, eh? <laughs> I can't believe we actually got there. There's no people. <laughs> distance but they seem to be not coming towards our line and then over there on the horizon is a state highway which is what we're aiming for
only a gap here is going to be terrifying. And a gap like that would have probably been long enough. Oh, it goes down. onto the drive maybe. It's pretty good if your one doesn't work. It's gone for the leapfrog technique. State Highway 1, New Zealand's main highway that runs the whole way from the most northern point of the North Island to the most southern point of the South Island, is where you leave us halfway through day one, as we take a well-deserved break to eat lunch while sitting in the scorching sun and being eaten alive by midgets. So until next time, goodbye. So if you like to go